How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to the Firestorm podcast. This week, we are bringing you a brand new, a brand new album by this uh, guy I have never heard of before. Uh, I literally do not know who he is at all. Me either. Um, he's some dude called Silver Storm. Um, yeah, some underground artist. Um, just figured it would be a good time to like uh, support some lesser known artists. Uh, you know. So, so, I've never really heard props. of this guy before, but give some props uh, yeah, to, uh, the, those in the YouTube sphere that are, are not as big as others. But this yeah. guy, this guy, this completely anonymous man, has yes. uh, released his first original album, all with songs based on different Pokemon that the Ash, the character Ash, has had before his Ace Pokemon. And, yes. um, yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Um, let's drop a charade, is Gus. Um, it, it's... Oh, what? Oh, oh my holy, god. Holy, <laughs> holy shit. Fuck! Uh, yeah. Gus. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, so, of course, if you've paid attention to Firestorm lore, uh, you know this is actually not my first original album, but as far as public facing <laughs> stuff true. goes, it's my first original true. album. It's my <laughs> first original, so... Everybody, so just it's my first original album. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's a first. So, no, 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 okay, but for, for those the newcomers, please <laughs> pray tell what was your first first original album? Because my I first first God, original album. I swear to God, I listened to it and I remember only liking like one song. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to re- remind me what was. It? <laughs> yes, it was called Generations. Ah, that's um, it. That's it. Yeah. yeah that's so good. that was. So Generations was filled up with a bunch of songs that I made in, like, 2016, 2017, 2018 era. Um, they were all garbage. Um, so, uh, yeah, as far as, as far, far, far as, like, anything else goes, I'm erasing that from history. Uh, this is my first original album. Fuck yeah. Um, Obviously... And it's more, it's a lot more fitting with the Silver Storm image because it's about Pokemon. So... Yes. And now that Ash is no longer in, you know, present in the Pokemon anime. This may very well be the last Pokemon stuff that I do, like, ever. Like, I, it's, I'm not ruling out any future stuff, but, like, I have no intention on covering the new Pokemon uh, opening, the new one for the Horizons or whatever. So it's like, this could be the last Pokemon stuff I ever do. So That's it's, uh, crazy it's, to think about. Because, yeah. like, so, uh, I'll, I'll be completely honest, a lot of your, like, obviously you would know, a lot of your more, most popular stuff is Pokemon related, like, yep. you know that thing on Spotify like, that has, like, oh, this artist is featuring these playlists, they're all people's Pokemon playlists, <laughs> like, yep. that's what a majority mm-hmm. of them are, and, yes. like, I, I'm obviously, I'm rattling this off because it's, you know, it's an album review, we're approaching things a little bit different this time around since you're the dude. But that is, I am the dude. That, that is, like, a big thing to say, because you have a lot of albums that are Pokemon-based. you got Mystery yes. Dungeon, This Dream, Believe, uh, Sun to Sky, and, like, mm-hmm. f- fuck. And now, yeah. like, you got some other songs as well that, that are singles or featured in other things, like, and the EP, uh, the yeah. Pokemon B-Sides EP as well, like, you, and mm-hmm. the Black and White single, like, you got a lot of Pokemon-related shit yeah and now this album really yeah it does feel like the fitting ending or the culmination of years of work years of skill that have all yep. gone into this album and years of pokemon anime uh writing experience you know i've i put together all those like extended versions where i wrote more to a song that wasn't there before um like with the i want to be a hero and the diamond and pearl rap and all that nonsense like it's i've spent many years like a surprising number of years of my life like writing pokemon anime related stuff and this is like the culmination of all that so, also i want to give a shout out to believe because they were the movie songs weren't they they yes yes they were much more attention because the movie songs were awesome anyway um things are going Some to be a little bit different this time around uh because Usually, for all of our albums... I'm going to be treating my album with scathing criticism. Be like, man, I wish this shit wasn't fucking terrible. Yes, I... Yes, (laughs) so... 100%. Yeah, fuck this shit. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, usually with all our album reviews, because of you know copyright and the way YouTube works, if you get a video copyrighted for licensed music being in it, uh, that video is less recommended. Pray, uh, pray tell, uh, case in point, the uh, I mentioned this in the previous, I believe. No, we we mentioned it when are we were recording Mario. Um, mm. My Japan. Who knows when that'll hat will go up. <laughs> yeah, true. They'll go up sometime in the future. But in the Japan vlogs we did, uh, I did, sorry, um, yeah. I used Gus's cover, uh, Vandalize, and the very beginning of it was picked up and they thought it was Victor Knight's um, cover. And because Victor it was McKnight, yeah. McKnight, sorry. Yeah, and because it was copyrighted, it got like half as many views as the rest of the vlogs. Mm. So, like, that's just, pray tell, evidence of that happening. Yep. But um, this time around, because it is quite literally Gus's own music, we are able to And I control it. the copyright. It's my damn fucking copyright. So I can choose just, like, this will, so you, like, I don't know if y'all know how it works, but basically YouTube just shows things that have your music into your, like, here's stuff that has your s- songs. And I can just see this and be like, cool, it passes. And I don't have to do anything. So, um... Yeah, it'll. Yeah, we're you can actually, actually going play to these play songs. Your shit. We're gonna play in the uh, in the video, so you don't even have to listen. I mean, you probably you might because I don't know how soft or loud we're gonna be playing the songs, um, but probably pretty pretty down there in the background. Um, mm-hmm. So just because you to make sure you can hear us talking, because you can always go back and hear the songs whenever, because the album's out by the time this video will go up. So you can always hear the songs, but. We want to make sure you can hear us over the song, just in case. Um, so, yeah, but yes. we will be playing them. So, yes. strap well, in. Obviously, we tell people, go listen over on whatever the preferred music platform is. You don't have to this time around, but please, 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 still, check out the album for yourself. Itself. Yes. It'll be on CD, or maybe all the CDs will be sold out at this point, I believe. Maybe. Or potentially, it depends. But, uh, if uh, get- there are still a few left, but the... Uh, I don't know exactly how many, but um, if it, if it rolls over, then I'll just keep it going until they sell out. So yeah. there's not that many. Left if they're not sold out, pick yourself up one or listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube Music, all that good shit. Wherever you listen to your music, don't forget as well. Like and subscribe. Check out Gus's channel. All of his bloody music. He's got loads. So of much. It. So no much. So much music. And, um, yeah, let us know your thoughts of the album down below in the comments. Let us know what yeah. you think of Gus's shit. I am going to be completely honest and brutally truthful if I feel yeah. the need to be. Um, and I Shit's want, fucking terrible. <laughs> and I want to hear Gus's thoughts and opinions on each song. And uh, mm-hmm. I believe this is a thing that we just decided. Uh, we're not going to be checking out the acoustics. There are two acoustic songs, I believe. Yeah, so we're not. Just, they're just re- basically exactly the same, but acoustics. Um, there's one for tried and true, one for undeniable. Um, but yeah, those don't need to be in the album review. Yep. Yeah, so we're it's just not, checking the, out the main. The main nine are the ones we're interested in. Yes, the main nine. Yes. So, do you have anything to say before we get into your? So, song? just a little bit. Um, I think I don't know it's how easy or hard it is to tell, but. For me, like, writing stuff, what it inspires me the most and really, like, gets my creative uh, creative process going is when I have, like, an idea where I can, I guess, style the songs themselves around, like, a certain vibe or idea. And this was kind of how this album came to be because, you know, when I you approach each song, it's like, oh... This, this Pokemon's a fire type, this Pokemon's a grass type, this Pokemon's a water type. I can try to style the a bunch of different things about the music itself around that and be like, oh, I want this to flu- flow smoothly like a, like water, or I want this to be like kind of sharp and fast, like uh, a blade of grass, I don't know, some bullshit like that. But you know, like you can, I can style it around the, uh, the actual personality and the type and like the moves that the Pokemon uses. Like that's what... I like and it's kind of it's in that way it's almost kind of like doing a video game soundtrack because you style the uh the songs themselves around like what area you're in or what have you um and that's that's what I really like to do and like what really gets my like creative stuff going because I have like an idea from right off the bat um but 
So, so you're definitely going to hear it, and I'll explain some of it when after each song. Um, but yeah, it's that's what uh, you're definitely going to hear it as we go on. Um, the ideas that I had. If you, if if I if unless I have to just explain it to you, and then you'll hear it when I explain it to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I do appreciate, which I am keen for, is that you've taken a different approach for each song. Uh, and like, and none, no two songs sound identical, mm-hmm. which is one thing I know a lot of artists fall into the trap of. So, mm-hmm. I, from what I, the few songs I have heard, I have definitely noticed a big difference. And you're right, like yeah. some of them flow like water or sting like a fucking bee or something like that yeah just whatever that is you know what i mean you'll hear it <laughs> exactly Alrighty. yeah so okay so we're going we're gonna go ahead and start number one uh track number one is called tried and true i think no it wasn't the first original song i released since i actually was good uh but <laughs> it is the first like it is the one about Ash's Pikachu, and he uh, he's a good boy, so let's begin. Uh, we're playing track number one in three, two, one, go. I gotta turn that down. Mine was too loud, too. Yeah. I, ironically, it makes me want to sing along less when it's my own voice. <laughs> I was gonna go. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the lyrics of um, what Pikachu says at the end of the I Choose You movie. I always want to be with you. <laughs> Damn, I, that was a missed opportunity. God damn it! What did I? What? Can I Google that? What did he even say? He said it's because I always want to be with you. Well, that's oh. in response to why didn't you go in your boat? I remember it was. Cursed. I fucking hate that. <laughs> that's fucking terrible. Hey, hey! I like that. So this is the sound I feel like I'm most familiar with your music. This, yeah, this sort I of agree. rock. This style. That's nice. This resonates a lot more, obviously, because Pikachu is the main fucking boy. And I yeah. know... I, 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 actually got a, I actually got a wave of comments uh, after the anime was ended after the anime ended that were like oh we'll miss Pikachu made me kind of <laughs> sad I like that part watch us prove it all to you bitch oh I've abused this formula, but it does work. Just that progression from on the second chorus? Is that what it is? Um, just like the, uh, the way, like, there's four sections of the chorus, and have the third one be a little more, a little more high energy than the others. Oh. I abuse that. So, like, if you divide it, I don't know, I can't explain it. It's math. <laughs> Fuck that. I like this too. With the guitars like resting and then. Yeah, we've come so far. So saying shit like that will make all the nostalgic fans wet themselves. We've come so far, I know the show's ended! Uh. Yeah, right. Uh. Nice claps. Uh. Wow. 
Wow. Damn. I'm going. I, I made. I don't know how many Pokemon fans I made. Uh, I made almost cry with that one. Plenty. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> Enough. Of Pokemon fans. Enough. That that was yeah. nice. Like, I I <clears throat> feel like that. Like, like, obviously, it's hard to say. Like, as you said, this is probably a culmination of like everything. Well, I said that actually. I said this is probably the culmination well, of all your. Pokemon I agreed music. with you. <laughs> yes, and you said this is probably going to be like the last Pokemon related stuff you make, unless something else catches your eye. Which is yeah. valid, very valid. You've made a lot of Pokemon stuff, but like, I feel like that's the perfect like wrap up for like everything. It's like, yeah, that this is like a big mix of everything you've done so far, and because it's it has your distinct sound as well. Because yeah, I've definitely noticed in the past a lot of your songs use very similar sounding drums and guitars, and like I can mm-hmm. always pick out when it's your song and like, yep. obviously then your voice kicks in I'm like yeah 100% because like yeah. it's a very distinct sound which is a good thing at the very beginning when he was like like years ago when you were still finding your rhythm I was kind of like yeah it's a little mm. bit eh, uh, it sucks a little bit I, I don't really vibe with it I didn't really listen to a lot of your older stuff and I'm pretty sure not a lot of people do anymore any, anyway because nope. yeah you've improved immensely since then and this is kind of like, this is one of those iconic songs, which is just like, this is what I think about when I think about Silver Storm. This is one yeah. of those songs I think people will be vibing Yeah, with. because it's it's like, it was one of the first original songs I posted. I think it was the only one after Battle Stance, which was forever ago. Um, but yeah, it was like the first one after that. And it it's definitely like, this was the first song, and I've been like brainstorming it for a while, where I was like, okay, this is it. This is the sound I've been looking for. And um, and for this one especially, I was like, when I was thinking about, because I even from the beginning I had planned a f- full album, I was like, for Pikachu, I imagine something where they're like in a, they're like in a stadium, they're battling, and the fans can chant along with it. And that's what inspired a lot of the like, the little... Um, yeah hey, and and the, hey. hey yeah i was imagining that where a lot of the like the fans in the stadium can chant along with them um mm. to the song so that's that was the big inspiration for that so i was going for like a stadium thing um where like maybe even like i don't know some like some sports guy walking down the fucking aisle or whatever it is making his entrance to uh to something like that so something that would fit very easily in a in a big stadium so but while still being super catchy and relating to like ash and pikachu's story so that's what uh that's what came out of that now that you say that that does make a lot of sense it feels like one of those songs that would play in a stadium and the whole crowd can go along with it Mm -hmm. whoa (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah exactly exactly all right no that Um, was good definitely yeah very very good song i'm very happy with that yeah big old good boy pikachu um all right so track number two well don't worry he's in the new series too he's chilling out he's captain Um, pikachu yeah i can't can't wait for the original can't wait for the original song on captain pikachu (laughs) i'll just make it the one piece the the luffy song and it'll be fine (laughs) I'll just make it the same thing. Also could be interpreted as Captain Pikachu. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Um, <laughs> Whichever uh, one gets more clicks. <laughs> yeah. I just changed the title and thumbnail completely. <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. for the first for the first bit it's Captain Pikachu and then after that it's just Luffy. Yeah. It's like, alright. Yeah. There we go. Um all right, so track number two is Ignite the Fire. This is Charizard's, uh, this is the song inspired by Charizard. So we actually did listen to this on a podcast that never got released. Um, so oh, yeah. it has been a, a new, it has been improved a little bit since then. I, um, I, I don't know if you heard, but the Tried and True, like since Tried and True came out, I actually got a new set of drums. So the drums got replaced in the new version for tri- of Tried and True. And I like the new drums I have way f- so much better than the old ones. Um, 
And this it's the same in Ignite the Fire. And I think it actually, like, if you compare the two, I think it makes a huge difference. But you, like, have to listen to them back to back. Yeah. Um, what was that podcast? So, I don't even remember, dude. That was uh, so... Wasn't it listening to my old shit? Oh, Something yeah. Like I think we did a whole thing where we, like, listen to a bunch of your old shit and then we listen yeah. to ignite the fire to compare it but then you were just then you afterwards you were like this seems kind of boring i'm not gonna I'm not yeah gonna especially because we like didn't i wa- i didn't want to like edit in all the things because i was constantly moving around in yeah, all the different songs that's and I was like, right that was a vibe. yeah because it was Damn. yeah <laughs> that's fair enough no look I, I honestly with tried and true like it's been that long since i heard it originally <laughs> i didn't I couldn't really tell, but it did. It did sound very clean. I did appreciate yeah. that. All right, I'm keen for right. Night the Fire. I remember liking this one. So let's do it. All right, Th- track number two in three, two, one, go. I broke it. You broke it. We good? No, it's good. It's good. All right. I actually replayed Tried and True there for a second, but no one noticed. No one knows this. Oh, I forgot. I actually, I don't riff very much. Any like in my original songs, I usually don't riff too much. So I like this, this little opening. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that actually. Pleasantly surprised. That's a that's an accidental I don't use. <laughs> wow. Forgot about that. You know me and my double layered vocals. Preach. Burn it down. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> Big growl. Love the growl. Love it. You don't growl much, do you? No, I just put some grit in my singing sometimes. I have other people growl for me. <laughs> See, this guitar sound I know is. Double layered, interesting drums. Nice. Oh, I changed this part. I remember changing this. Ooh! That was sick! I actually put a little bit of distortion on this part, on my vocals here. Bit of harmony. It's still, I don't know why, but that just doesn't, something about that, like, not not the vocals and the song itself, but like the actual melody, I'm just like, why did I do that? But I mean, it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just strange. Ooh. Man, that was so edgy. Holy shit. I know, I was kind of listening like, what is happening? <laughs> this is very different. I came, I saw, I put them down. Holy fuck. That's awesome. <laughs> oh. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that shit. Hmm. Yeah, oh, oh, 
man, that is some edge. I kind of like that. <laughs> I, I feel I mean, like... I wrote it. Uh, no, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I feel, I feel like uh, that wasn't enough edge for me. I could have gone edge. Well, more. fair enough. Like, like understandable. <laughs> uh, like, that could have been if it was a little bit heavier. I could have I could have been like vibing with more, with more edginess. But um, the the literally I, I I big fan of that. Only part I'm a little bit like eh on is sometimes when you like try to go up and up like up an octave you go. And I burn it down, like something like that. Sometimes it doesn't always hit right to me. Yeah. Like sometimes it sounds like you're almost cracking your voice a little bit, like a bit high pitched. But like there was one part when you were saying, "Oh, that's emo as fuck." Like during that po- section, when I especially then I noticed that. But mm. regardless, no, I'm a big fan of that. Definitely can feel the Charizard vibes because again, Charizard is a no- oh, hit my desk. Charizard is another one of Whoops. those Pokemon which I'm a bit more familiar with, and I kind of know the story of a bit better, and yeah, that definitely fit the tone, and yeah, again, it had a little bit more different, like, a bit different to uh, fucking Tried and True, because actually it had a bit of more riffs in there, had a bit more, like, screaming, growling, I appreciate it, not screaming, just growling, so I definitely yeah. appreciated that. Still think Tried and True was slightly better, but I'm still a fan of this one. I do think it Fair fits. Enough. I still think it fits what you're going with here. I do. I do. Yeah. Like mm. Well, there's a bunch of uh, like it's all a little more, a little heavier than most like actual Pokemon stuff. So. Yeah. No, like that makes sense for when you would think Pokemon related stuff. Don't know if a lot of people would think of that tone. Yeah. But um, even then, like I, it, when I think heavy. I don't necessarily think harmonies. This is just me. Like, when I think heavy, I just think the heavy guitar, the loud drums. When you add harmonies on there, a lot of the time it kind of mellows it out for me. So, mm-hmm. th- but that's just me. That's just me. I, I still... Well, understandable. Yeah. I still like this one a lot. Pretty cool. Ignite the fire. Ignite the flame. Ignite it all. Yeah. Uh, okay, so moving on. Track number three is Leaf in the Wind. That's the Septile-inspired song. This is actually one of my favorites. So... Very nice. Let's, uh, Quick let's go. I, it, I saw, especially during... <laughs> we talked about this in other podcasts, um, how, like, the album art, when you drop that, a lot of people, like, it started going out of its demographic. And a lot of people started talking about what are Ash's real ace Pokemon. And like, someone was like, could you add yep. Heracross? Or some shit like that. I remember you talking about yeah, that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, what was your, like, uh, obviously you chose Ash's ace Pokemon, but what are yep. these guys who races? Obviously, like, things like Pikachu and Charizard. Oh, I should have talked about that. I, yeah. I should have talked about, uh, this actually was a talking point that I thought about ahead of time and I totally forgot to address it. Um, but it is worth mentioning, uh, what I was looking for is not necessarily strength, like just them being strong, but it was more like I was looking for a story, if that makes sense. Um, Mm -hmm. like I was looking for Pokemon that had gone through like ups and downs and actually had trials and tribulations to overcome. And while and had like come out the other side of that being one of Ash's most identifiable and strongest Pokemon. Um, so that's why there ended up being two for Alola, because I think both of the Alola Pokemon had really good stories going for them, or at least stories that I felt I could work with. So it's what I was looking for is just the, the, the stories. And I didn't think like something like Heracross <laughs> who didn't really who never never evolved for one, but also just didn't really have like much of a personality beyond liking Bulbasaur's whatever it is, um, the sipping Bulbasaur's sap, if you will. Um, right. Yeah, I just I, I was looking for more of a story, and that you know these are the yeah. ones that I picked out. So. Not valid. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was okay. curious about that because I know he's had. Fucking loads of Pokemon, but I didn't really know, especially because I haven't watched a lot of the later seasons of anime. I didn't know why is the Cario here, like stuff like that. Like, no, yeah, 
Well, to be fair, we'll we'll get we'll we'll talk about that when we get there. But yeah. it's not as much a Lucario song. That one's more just like a general farewell to Ash, actually. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Let's continue before we keep talking. All right. Here we go. Track number three in three, two, one, go. Ooh. This is one of those styles I always wanted to try. That was very cool. I almost wish that went for an extra two seconds. That was just so cool sounding. Just like with the very dumbed down. Mm. I like this. This is nice. Oh, nice. That was cool. Is that again? Nice. I'm noticing a lot of the uh, grass move references. Yes. I like this a lot. This is this is genuinely one of my favorite ones. The whole album, but fucking so much fun. This is mid, dude. This is so nice. I like this a lot. Fucking just rhyming that shit up the wazoo. He can rhyme, he can do it all. Like a madman. Eat your heart out, DJ Go. Yeah, exactly. Love that effect on the voice. This part's nice. Yeah, that was Fuck good. Yeah, I fucking love that. That was great. Fuck yeah. Let me fight, we'll make it through. I like that. Nice. Whoa! Bro, those, those effects were cool. <laughs> right? I was getting madness vibes from just those effects, like the beginning of madness. Damn, very epic, bro. There, legit, one of your best songs, I reckon. God, yeah, fucking damn. That that is that's still one of my favorite songs I've ever written. 
Um, it's just like when I had that idea, like it, just that style, like in the verses where it's just very like the, the drums are kind of like groovy. It's very subdued. There's a bass going like there's a clean guitar, very subdued instrumental overall. But like the drums are like kind of hard hitting and the vocals are soft. I that's like something I'd always wanted to try. I don't remember where I like got that inspiration from, but that was a style that I kind of always wanted to try. And it just it lent itself to this idea. And I don't very often like, I don't know, like if you talk to a lot of musicians, they'll just tell you, oh, I, it all just came to me. You know, all the, this whole song, it just came to me. That doesn't happen very much with me. And it happened to me for this one. Like it really did all just come to me. Like as I was writing, I was like getting ideas more and more and I would just keep going. Uh, and so that just, it just turned into this and it was fucking awesome. So I was really happy with how this one turned out. Dude, that, like, <clears throat> unironically, like, that was my, like, one of my favorite songs I've heard from you. And like, not to blow smoke up your ass, you know, like, I have weird opinions on music. Like, I, I, I very, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you, you can tell from previous album reviews, I pick out the weirdest things and fixate on the weirdest things that I like, like random voice echo effects or some shit like that. Like, I, I mm-hmm. like very different things compared to a lot of people in my music. And that, I reckon, has become one of my favorite songs of yours. Like, I, I've just added it to my playlist, Trent's Top Songs. So um, there you go. Like there other songs go. I've got, like "Breathe" is in there. "Breathe," you know, that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite songs of yours. Like mm-hmm. shit like that. That that song was a fucking vibe, and like especially during these album reviews, because a lot of the time I'm heavily I'm trying to focus on one thing or another. I usually listen to the instrumental, and you usually point out interesting things about the lyrics. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that just always happens. I always remember that's, back to yeah. like. I always remember back to Bulletproof and how you fucking pointed out the lyrics to me like halfway through. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, that is what they saying. <laughs> but, um, cause That's I was just like, moment. oh, it is. I was just vibing to the instrumental and you're like, holy fuck, <laughs> dude. Like, oh, oh, I'm like over here having an existential crisis and you're just like vibing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, I normally just like sit and like nod my head to the music. But quite literally, for Leaf in the Wind, I was like swaying side to side because I was just having a good time. Yeah. I was literally, I'm just That's a jam. swaying like, so I'm having a good time, having a good time. Yeah. So, Don't stop me now. Fucking epic, man. That is awesome. Big I'm fan. glad you like that one because it's one of my favorites too. So, mm-hmm. all right. Definitely. Big fan. Big fan. Yeah. All right. So, Let's go Sceptile. Tra- yeah, that was for <laughs> Sceptile. So, um, and there was there was actually a moment there, just a quick reference for anyone who didn't pick it up. Um, the uh, most of it was just like grass type moves, a lot of grass type move stuff. Um, Septile kind of had this weird arc in the anime where he like lost confidence in himself um, and couldn't like pull off any grass type moves or something like that. And that was supposed to be represented in that soft part right before the final chorus, where he's like saying he it's not enough. Um, so, uh, tell me how to leave behind my weaknesses. I think the lyric right after that. So that was when he works with Ash and like overcomes that self doubt or whatever it is. So it's, it's a weird little arc because it was kind of like inspired by being, it's kind of started by being rejected by some Meganium. Like he was in love with a Meganium and then it, like, he like got, <laughs> he got rejected <laughs> and, Damn. uh, yeah. So he, it was, it was rough. It was an arc that happened, so I, I figured it yeah. might as well reference that in the um in like the soft part since it's fitting. There's <sighs> also a one a one liner, uh, "I'll be the one to end the nightmare," I believe is the line. Uh, that that's in reference to the time Septile came back during the Sinnoh League and beat up Darkrai. Uh, nice. So, yeah, because that was just a yeah. weird thing that happened randomly, but. He did. He, he was the only back. Pokemon. Yeah, he was the only Pokemon in the whole anime to beat Tobias's Darkrai. So I was like, "Fuck it." Wow. I'll just include that too. Oh, I mean, fair <clears throat> enough. Honestly, yeah. like, it's probably the one thing with me because, like, I, I haven't. I'm not a big Anypoke guy. I know there's a 
a lot of people that are into the Pokemon anime, like the Anipoke server, he's talked about hanging out with the Anipoke mm. dudes before. I know about all the fans and all the fans that love your videos and your songs. Mm. And I usually... I never think that deeply when it came to Pokemon because like every time I watched it, it was just a thing that came on and I enjoyed it. I never yeah. really thought that deeply. Like the most emotional I ever remember Pokemon being is like Paul rejecting Chimchar. Like that's about it. Yeah. And like being a, being a dick to Chimchar because it was so in your face. Like, so things yeah. like a, a Pokemon's self doubt, I wouldn't have really noticed when watching. Yeah. So pointing all that out Fair is enough. really interesting to me. Yeah. I there do appreciate that. Well, though. speaking of Paul, uh, here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fourth track is called Undeniable, and it's about Infernape. So let's go. What a coincidence. That actually was not planned, but there you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you wouldn't have guessed amazing. it. Uh, you can't write better shit than that, I tell you what. Um, you can't. <laughs> All right, playing track number four in three, two, one, go. Oh, it's one of these intros. This one's unusual in that, like, this chorus is is more like directly addressing not Ash. Um. <laughs> It's so, oh, fuck you! Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, immediately, straight away. This is what's right for me. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> I like that dichotomy there. So that's the thing, these are songs about his ace Pokemon. It's not his relationship with the ace Pokemon necessarily, it's about yeah. the ace Pokemon. So this works. Not just a victory. Ooh. That was a change up. Oh. That little bit verse melody is one of my favorite type of I don't know how I came up with that. Someday we are going to prove me right. I love that. That's very fast and chaotic chorus, but I do like it. Oh, we're building up here. Ooh. I like moments like this without lyrics. I do appreciate them. That was emo. That was awesome. That was great.
Nice. That's all she wrote. Well, he wrote. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you know, that, okay, that, like, build up of getting to the highest point, like, uh, at my highest, and then, like, the harmony going really high as well, and then blending back into the last chorus, but you're still at that high point, like, of the harmony, like, that was mm-hmm. fucking cool. I really liked that. That was so cool. Yeah, that was, so this one, like, I was kind of stumped on this for a while because I didn't, like I, I couldn't come up with lyrics that I was like satisfied with, but I had the chorus. Like I knew I wanted it to be fast and like a little bit like chaotic. I guess is the right word, but very like heart pumping. Because like when I think of Infernape, I think of like this agile monster who can punch your lights out. Um, so that's kind of like what inspired the overall vibe. But like at the same time. Infernape is my favorite of Ash's Pokemon, like, full stop. And, like, it's, it has such a compelling story, and I wanted it to make sure, I wanted to make sure the song had the, the emotion to it, too, that I think it needed. And that's why it really, I really like the contradictions between, like, the slow points with the, the, um, the very reverby guitars and the drums taking it slower. Uh, versus the faster parts where it gets and kicks up um so i made sure to to make that happen and i like the um i don't do it much but like that little build up that of the slow reverb guitars without any lyrics on top of it like i don't do that much but i think it needed it here to like right before that big drop in the bridge so i yeah i really like how this one turned out for sure yeah, that was very cool. I I didn't know what to expect because like it was going up and down for a bit because I I had expectations at the start and then you like after the first chorus it slowed down a bit and I was like what I was kind of a little bit stumped and I was like ah oh. but I really did like that that was cool yeah so hey look I haven't hated anything this has all been bops yeah Let's right see. I've been impr- it's almost like I've gotten better or something. Yeah, the boys. That's it. Holy shit! Holy shit! Um, yeah, no, I don't have much more to say. Uh, so much, much more else to say about that one. Um, but yeah, that was. I think that's like probably. I would. Uh, I mean, maybe along with the last one, the final song of this album. But that's probably like one of the more emotional songs that I've done. Like that, just more like raw emotion, I guess. Um, but still being like in my in the rock style that I'm used to writing in. So, mm-hmm. but I think it turned out good. So anyway, Epic. uh, okay. Track number five is stand my ground. It's the crocodile inspired song. Um, this is probably the one that I kind of, um, I wasn't sure where to go with it to start, but I definitely wanted to make sure I included crocodile again, kind of like leaf in the wind. This is, a, this song's a style I always wanted to try. So, um, yeah, I think we're getting into <clears throat> more territory I'm unfamiliar with now because I was mostly familiar with those first four. I mm-hmm. have fucking zero idea what Crocodile had to do in the story. So, yep. I'm, I'm so, interested. There we go. Um, okay, so playing track five in three, two, one, go. Yeah, this this style like swing, swing genty guitars. I always wanted to try this. Nice. I like this. Giving time to the song to breathe before you start singing. I do like this. I'll fuck you up! (laughs) I'll punch your lights out, fucker! Why be left behind? I really like that little riff. (laughs) That was cool. Danny, oh, where are you? Yeah, 
Oh. He that was edgy, him. right? He owned him. <laughs> It'll be edge now. Oh, that was good. You went somewhere new with that, y'all. Yeah. My uh, in recent months, my high, higher, yelling, screaming, growling, singing has improved a lot. So, thankfully. Yeah, I managed to you ever go off. back and re-record a scream or something for a song when you figure out you can do it better? Yes, frequently actually. Nice. It's because you wear sunglasses. Ah, <laughs> get it. <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself a little bit, but it, it kind of works. <laughs> That's that that fucking was. lied. That lied. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh man, that's a good I one. I think that's another one to be added to the Trent's top song playlist. That that's was, a good uh, one. That was good. What? What is that? Tell me that line one more time. Like you accepted um, your defeat when you so stood across it's, from me. Um, right from the start, when you stood opposite me, you accepted your defeat. That's the Bro, one. Bro, that's a fucking banger. <laughs> 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 I felt the I felt the edge a bit with that one. That was uh, yep. definitely more my style. I appreciated that. Um, there you go. Fuck. Uh, what do you what I, do you I, think? I, go okay. ahead. I feel like paying attention to the lyrics a bit more. Crocodile, at least from what I'm vibing of the story, he was looking for obviously looking for a better fight, looking for someone that could defeat him. But it was also the matter of him wanting to go with Ash, like yeah. Kind so of that, I kind of got that. What sort of well, what like, sort of happened in the in the show is uh, when Crocodile was a sand dial, they they met pretty early on in Blood Black and White, and then uh, Sand Dial started following them. So it wasn't Ash's Pokemon actually for quite a few episodes until a little bit later on, but they kept. Sandile was following Ash, and they would, because it wanted to battle Pikachu. You uh, know, I actually kind of remember that. I did watch a bit of yeah. Black and White. I just remember Sandile randomly appearing sometimes. Yeah, so he would, uh, so he would, because he wanted to battle Pikachu, he considered Pikachu his rival. So, eventually that kept going, and I don't remember exactly what circumstances led to Ash catching him, but eventually it, it got to the point where, like, Sandile was so far away from home that it was like, well... Might as well just become one of Ash's Pokemon. Um, Damn. So, yeah, it just it just sort of happened. But um, one of the, the most the moment I remember about Crocodile the most for me was when he was a Crocorock. He was actually battling Iris's Dragonite, and that's when he evolved into Crocodile. Um, and I think won. I'm pretty sure he beat Iris's Dragonite. So Damn. it was uh, yeah, it was a it was a pretty big moment, surprising, but. Because uh, I think Crocodile overall has kind of like the least amount of story out of all the Pokemon on this in this album, um, but that's and I mean it was the shortest song in fairness, but that's kind of like why I took more of just a general edgy approach for this one, whereas just you know, like what 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 did you call being, it like metal like, like heavy swing what did you call it I song? call it gent swing gent is what I would call it, um, gent. but yeah gent is like the um, it's it kind of refers to the style where it's like um, more of those open string, single string hits. Like that's what the gent riff is. What I would call the the opening riff. Um, okay. Like single string, very like percussive feeling, um, and uses 
like only one note at a time, that kind of thing. Um, usually, I mean, nowadays, gent you would find uh, is much crazier than that. Like mine's more of a mine's more of a smooth brain gent, but um, <laughs> it's uh it's it still works. And I did like obviously I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Not that I even could if I wanted to, but um, yeah, it just it, it's kind of like that. The, just giving the whole song a general attitude feel of like having an attitude sort of um, yeah well that was that was cool dudes with attitude that was well, yeah no uh, that, that like that's that the that's the song you're like see, like some guy in like the uh some guy in like a leather jacket with like a uh topless car um fucking <laughs> driving across the road and like r- rolling up in sunglasses and be like hey punk <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that's crocodile. He's just revving up his bike. Pretty much. That that actually is just crocodile. Um, no, that was that was that was fucking sick. Another one I'm putting in the t- in my playlist. I can easily fuck with that. That was really cool. Nice. Like, but compared to like parts of Undeniable, like there there were admittedly parts like when you were singing really fast that I kind of missed a word or two. And I was mm-hmm. like, what fuck's going on? But I, d- I did not miss any of that. I fucking, me slow brain over here fucking comprehended everything that was going on, including the instrumental. And I fucking vibed with it. That was cool. Yeah. That was, that's definitely like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll uh, come back to that style. I'd like to, but like, that was just like something I'd always wanted to, Wanted to try my hand at, see what I can do. Um, so uh, I can't really yeah. imagine any like, like song that you would go to cover that would be in that style. Yeah, well, exactly, like exactly. That that's like that's something that I'd have to write. Yeah, so it's something I'd have to write. So, but yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. So, can't complain. Um, so track number six is called Battle Bond. This one's inspired by Ashes Greninja. So obviously I had a uh, a lot of very rabid XY fans' expectations to live up to with this one, and I gotta say I think I went in a different direction than they were expecting. So um, uh, the only thing I know about Greninja is that he has a special form. Yep, like that's pretty much all ash. you need to know. <laughs> the, the yeah, the ash. That's all that's important. That's, 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 that's all that's important. Uh, and his scarf is a tongue, which still freaks me out. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that is weird. Uh, I still I still haven't gotten over that myself. But uh, yeah. So we're gonna play track number six in three, two, one. Go. Guys, water. There it is. That's the one. <laughs> I'm drowning. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gonna carry me away. I love that. This is where he transforms into Ash Greninja. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Whoa. Holy fuck. Now he's back to normal. He's chilling. Long time. Yeah, I like I like this guitar. Like that immediately. I don't know why it gives me water vibes. It's like beach. Beach boys. I like this part. Water too. references. More. Wa- 
had F majors. So. Guys, this is about to transform, I can feel it. He's about to go even further beyond. He's going even further beyond! <laughs> even stronger! <laughs> I'm strong! Even stronger! Uh, Ash Greninja form! <laughs> <laughs> Synchronize, isn't that. Wait a minute, I've heard of that. Yeah, that's the thing. Me? Yeah. I love the power of this bond. That's pretty cool. I love that line. Yeah. Are you a bit quiet here? I feel like you were almost too quiet for that. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that was cool. What a hard squad. I think that was five layers of harmony. Nice. Is it all the same take, or were they different takes? Um, it was, they are all different notes, so. Ah. Five, yeah. I've always been curious about that. Hearing shit like that. Is it just the same shit laid? Or was it? Nah, you can't do that. I wish you could, but. See, I never do that. I like that little ending. That's cool. Yeah, actually, that was cool. Considering, like, that thing was playing throughout the whole song. And that was the thing that ended it as well. I did like that. Yeah. Um, so do you think that lived up to the XY fans? Uh, I mean, it seems like it did, based on the comments I got. But I think... So, uh, my thought process here was actually a little bit more uh, thorough than a lot of the others. So... Obviously, when most people uh, think of like Ash and Greninja, they think of X, Y, and Z, the the opening song, like um, the one that Rika Matsumoto did, the uh, the voice actress for Ash in Japanese. That's an iconic song, um, and it's it's like it's it's really like an amazing song. It really is, but it's super high energy rock the entire time, and it's so for this one, I was like. If I'm doing Greninja, I need to go in a completely different direction. So I like actively decided to take what was essentially the opposite approach and start with like a very calming intro and then ramp it up later. Um yeah. So it was it, yeah, it was interesting because like I think so many people associate X Y and Z the song with that uh with with Greninja. So I was just like I got to do something different. And I think it turned out well because, again, this is kind of like a, sort of a style that I didn't necessarily want to try, but like just having those clean guitars going with like a little, a nice little riff that whole time. It's, it's a cool, like, I think it, it feels nice for this like song, which is all like about the like flowing, references flowing water a bunch and all that nonsense. Um, just having that calming intro and then the outro kind of being the same um, with uh, some repeating lyrics from the first verse. I think it was, I think it's good. So, um, but yeah, I think that, that was, that was, I think people might've been expecting it to be more like X, Y, and Z, where it's just super high energy rock, but that's not what I wanted. So I didn't want an exact copy, you know, that's lame. No, that's fair. That's fair. That, that's <laughs> always the weird thing with uh, trying to, live up to fan expectation when they kind of just want the same they want more of what they used to and like something new might put some people off it's always kind of the weird thing but um for me personally i did like that song i thought it was groovy 
I did appreciate mm-hmm. the that riff that just the thing going looping the entire time. I thought it was nice and catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like on honestly, not one of my favorites. Like it, it, it's not something. Right. It's not something I would skip, but it's not something I would purposely seek out. Right. Um. But no, I did actually like because there was one part, especially like getting towards the end where you were singing and then there was the riff and all the effects happening and you were singing, I felt like, I I mentioned it, you sounded really quiet and, you know, I think we've mentioned this in different album reviews where it sounds like the singer is, like, going from one pitch to another, like, and every time I will go, like, they go up a little higher, but the effects are, like, dampering them down a bit and they... Mm -hmm don't sound like they're going as high as they should like or sorry the it doesn't sound as loud as it should sound compared to the rest of the mix right that's uh, i'm getting a little bit, too bit better with my music terminology i've learned from you guys i'm learning a bit ah, but um yeah. yes uh i did really do, i did really like it though probably my least favorite thus far but i still think it was groovy and yep. i think uh, I, actually out of going... all of them i think that i i, I did kind of assume that you would vibe with that one the least so because well, it's, it's definitely yeah. like it's it's less your style i think the rest the other the rest i think uh at least you'll appreciate i think mm. one of them out of the next three you'll like more than the other two but hey Ooh, interesting <laughs> you do yeah. know my style well but yeah. um i honestly i do think for what you were going for that was pretty cool yeah i do think i will because that's that's very different from pretty much the entire rest of the album like a very significant uh detour if you will like it's it's very very different so Um, i'm in a weird place with music taste that almost gave me vibes of my brother's friend's band in england called bear traps but they have they have a bit more going on I, mm. I I want you to listen to some of those songs. That like that song, like Battle Bond, had enough in there, and where I was like catch, it was catchy, and I was paying attention, and I really did like it. I was grooving with it, um, but I feel like if there was just a few more things happening, I would have liked it a, mo- a lot better because they it kind of mm. gave me vibes to that. But I do I do see what you were going for, and I do think a lot of people will appreciate that style because I'm either yeah. like. Because it's just in that weird middle ground. Because I, I like a lot of slow piano songs or like calming songs. I'm weird. I like a lot of heavy shit, rock shit, calming shit, slow shit. But like that song was just in that level of like, yeah, it's cool, but it sounds like I've heard it before. And I'm not really seeking that out. It's that weird level for me. Right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But it, I was, yeah, that's kind of like, what I was going for, just the subdued kind of feel. Um, yeah. So yeah. All right. Oh, I'm, and just I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna some... send you bear traps. I'm, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. I want you to listen to well, I'm gonna explain some point. Greninja lore while you do that. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, pretty much. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, the intro references how Froki had been with a few trainers, but couldn't find anyone that he actually like thought could was like thought was worthwhile until he met Ash. Um, then the uh there's plenty of references to like them being synchronized which means which implies the Ash Greninja form um throughout like uh you know hearts collide literally the first line of the chorus is kind of meant to reference that um the during the second verse there's references to ice and fire that references Greninja's two biggest hurdles the first one being the uh, ice gym leader whose name I forget and Alan's Charizard. So, in that order. Uh, and then, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty much just straightforward. Like, we're best pals and we have an Ash Greninja form because we're that cool. Um, so, yeah, pretty straightforward other than that. But yeah, that's 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 the big one. Um, anyway, there's there's some Greninja lore for you. Well, all right. Uh, you said something about turtles, and I was just like, "Excuse me, what <laughs> turtles? What the fuck?" About I don't remember saying anything turtles. about turtles, but um... turtles. What? I don't know. Uh, no, uh, that's that was interesting. 
two. All right. So now we're into completely uncharted territory. As of the moment this this uh so this video is being recorded, these last three songs have not been released. Uh, so we're going into uncharted territory now. This yeah, track number boys. seven is called "Over the Edge." This one's about uh, Ash's lichen rock. Uh, Dusk right, form. Can, Special uh, lichen. Tell rock. me, tell me if it's more edgy than by having edge in the name. Well, it's not. It's not actually that edgy, but it's okay, uh, fair <laughs> you know, you said you know, you, lichen you, rock dust form, and I assumed. Yeah. It's the well, dust. fair enough. Well, it is. It is like a one of a kind thing. Like Ash kind of lucked out here, uh, but point is um this one's actually i believe this one's the fastest of the entire album so there you go there's a some quick trivia for you uh all right track number seven is playing in three two one go Ooh. I still like this riff. I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> Dusk, get it? Laugh. Those uh, uh, delayed guitars. That's <laughs> whoa. That those drums kind of hit me strangely. That's fine. Do. Whoops. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was again yeah. kind of a different style than I'm used to. But uh, I wanted to do, when I was thinking about well, I can rock. I just thought of fast and quick and just all going fucking crazy. So that's mm -hmm. what I ended up coming up with. Um, yeah. I'm so happy that everything has been different. Like yeah, right. That's. <sighs> I think I mentioned it earlier, like the trope of falling into 
having the same type of song for like a 12 track album and like only like three or four of the tracks really sound unique or like artists back in the day would drop a b-side of songs that sounded a bit different like mm-hmm. i'm glad there is variety here like yeah i, I know it you know that cliche of like oh every there's that many pokemon but every pokemon would be a favorite of someone i feel yeah. like you you've hit a lot of demographics with this album and there will be like one of these songs will be a definitive favorite for different people yeah um, agreed i thought that was cool i did like how fast it went i did think i i i was kind of just vibing the whole time and i was like going in and out of the lyrics but i, mm-hmm. I was just kind of just just chilling and i was just like yep this yeah is sick. no i it, mean it, the lyrics go by so fast <laughs> yeah uh, I was so i can't blame and, you and a lot of them was just like and i it was almost like because a lot of the lyrics obviously because they're about pokemon a lot of the lyrics are about battling fighting and yep like it's almost gone to the point where i'm just kind of letting it skate by and because like yeah the fight i had the fight word yeah okay cool we're still going so i kind of was just like <laughs> in and out of that one yeah, but yeah. No, I, I thought well, that was cool. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't help that they go by so fast. But yeah, pretty much the mm. the extent of the Lycan Rock lore. Originally, I meant to I meant to like uh, actually include more direct references to this. But Lycan Rock's big thing is that whenever his uh, whenever his fur got dirty or muddy or whatever, he would just fly into an uncontrollable rage, and that was meant to be. That was what Over the Edge is meant to imply. Um, so. So that's why he's like saying, uh, trying to battle before he goes over the edge. Um, so, but that's pretty much the big thing. The other big thing is when he was still a rock rough, uh, he would, he was a part of this, like, almost like an underground fight scene but for Pokemon, um, where he would fucking disappear in the middle of the night and go battle people, go battle other Pokemon, uh, in this weird rocky mountain place and um so when he there was this one time he couldn't be a magmar i think it was but he would try and try and he couldn't just, he just couldn't win against the magmar and he would stay up like night after night training by himself to to try to be stronger to beat the magmar and then eventually ash discovered him doing that because he was like where the hell's rock rough and uh the so he found him doing that and the uh they eventually started training together, and then Rockruff became one of his Pokemon. Big fucking surprise. Uh, so that that's the big lore there. Other than that, like, uh, just the the Dusk Forum just sort of happened because, like, I don't know, they decided that it should. Uh, it was just kind of this one time they were on a cliff or whatever, and Rockruff and like two like one day form like in Rock and one midnight form like in Rock. They were all there, and then the dusk thing happened, and they were like, all right, evolve right now, go, go, go! Um, and, well, they didn't actually say that, but they might as well have. But, uh, and so he just evolved at the, exactly the right moment, and now there's one of each type of Lycanroc in the story. whoop de doo uh, I mean, so, they, yeah. they, gotta, they gotta market all of the forms. Especially exactly. if Ash is using them. They gotta market it all, bro. Yep. Exactly. So, that's the big thing there, like, it almost seemed like, because the way the anime tried to make that happen, it almost seemed like that was what was meant to happen to Rockruff since the very beginning. Like, he was always meant to become a dusk form Lycanroc, which is kind of, which is why, like, the first uh, lyrics of the chorus of this track are, in between the sun and moon, I'll wait there for you. Because it's like waiting, like, fucking, I don't know. You get the idea. Point is, it's dusk form Lycanroc. whoop de doo um, And that's why it's like a one-of-a-kind uh lyric in the bridge because it's like I, i'm pretty sure as far as like the canon goes ash is the only one who's discovered that form like that was a completely new discovery at the time so oh. yeah Shit. there you go mm. there's some like and rock lore okay um i'm i'm going to call my shot i don't know if you'll like this one more than leaf in the wind but this is the one i think you're going to like more than the other two uh, right, track boys, number this eight. This is the exclusively the Trent song. All right. Yeah, this is uh, this one's the Incineroar song called "Hold Me Down." 
Uh, so this is, I mentioned this in a previous video we did. I don't remember which one it was. But um, obviously Incineroar is a wrestler. Like his design is based on a wrestler. So I decided mm -hmm. to, when writing this one, to almost make it sound like a wrestler's theme. Um, so Ooh. that's what, that's kind of like what I was going for here. So obviously still in my definitive like style of rock, but you will definitely hear elements like, I, I guess I would almost call it like elements of its simplicity. Um, like it's very simple and easy, not like easy going, but like simple and easy to follow like a wrestler's theme. So, mm -hmm. all right, let's, Six. let's go. Let's not waste any more time. Trent's, Trent's waiting over here. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, we're playing track number eight in three. Also be ready. You're going to get jump scared. Uh, oh, it, it kicks, it kicks off, it kicks off right Im immediately. Uh, just a heads up. The, uh, all right, three, two, one, go. Ah! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good chant. It is. I like that little jump. The instrumental breaks off right at the end, and then bam! Bam! I almost feel like he could have done a bit of growling to make that bit more impactful, because you were kind of like yelling most of it. Little string riff for you. Nice. Yeah, it's stuck in your head now, right? Yeah, no, that's catchy. <laughs> that's catchy as fuck. Nice. There's that's the cool. ticket. Yep. There's the ticket. That's the now, one. Now, um, <clears throat> believe it or not, not in the top three. Fair enough. It was 
very, very good. It was almost perfect in my mind. Because the harmonies and everything, the very catchy instrumental, like, easy to follow, you're right. It was pretty pretty chill, transitioned very well. I almost feel like you could have gone harder with the lyrics, with this with the vocals. Mm-hmm. Like, if there was a little bit of growling in it, like, nothing can hold me down. Like, just like, something a bit more gruff would have fucking made it hit a little bit harder because you were the same throughout the entire time in the uh, during the chorus. Mm-hmm. I feel like just something right at the end to hit it just a little bit harder. But I still appreciate that. That was still a very fucking... I, I will definitely play that song. I can definitely hear myself playing that song. But well, there you go. Not one of my favorites, unfortunately. Fair enough. All right. Um, so, yeah, for that one, it was just I wanted to keep it very simple and go forward with, like, uh, just some some good old riffage and uh, some fair. It's fairly simple guitar work, but uh, and easy melodies as well. But uh, I wanted to put the uh, I wanted to put some kind of like the same sort of uh, I guess power into the vocals as I have in some of the earlier songs. So that was what I was going for with the 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 parts where it's like I. I won't forget the words you said back then. Those are the lyrics. Um, so this is, again, pretty straightforward. Um, the Lytton uh, was raised by a Stoutland who died. Like, actually died. And, uh, oh, damn. Yeah. So For the Stoutland, the Stoutland, Stoutland is dead. And um, <laughs> Lytton kind of went into a depressive state because of that. And then Ash helped bring it out of that. Um, they actually actually known the Litton for a while before he caught it, um, but it was after Stoutland died, obviously, when he caught it. So what, what's that the, was what's the logic there? What the Stoutland and the Litton were just vibing around? Yeah, you know, Litton was like sort of an orphan type thing, and Stoutland was living on its own, so he took it in. Um, it was I don't know. It was just sort of a thing that happened, but yeah, Stoutland died pretty early on, and. It was, uh, that, that was, it was very, like, an, it's a very emotional thing as part of, like, Sun and Moon. A lot of Sun and Moon is pretty emotional. Um, but I wanted to go for more of, like, what I imagined in, in like, for Incineroar, actually. Because he, uh, like, it, he, even as a Tora Cat, he spent most of the series as a Tora Cat, the middle stage. Uh, it was, he was all about, like, surpassing himself and getting stronger uh specifically because he had a rival in professor kakui's incineroar so he actually during the pokemon league uh this was actually a really really cool moment um so in the after ash won and was battling professor kakui um one of the final battles was ash's Cat versus professor kakui's incineroar and Toracat actually won and beat Incineroar for the first time before evolving. And so after he won, he evolved into Incineroar. So that was badass. Um, because he wanted to prove himself as a Toracat that he could do it without needing to evolve. And then that's after that, he evolved. So it was that that's one of uh, I would argue this one of the most badass moments in like all of Pokemon. Like, it was a very cool thing, and that's why I think it... And But it was, like, a struggle to win, and it was it was very intense, and that's why the song is a lot about, like, surpassing your limits and all that tr- stupid, uh, you know, anime yeah. nonsense. Yeah, uh, yeah, anime stuff, so, anime stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's what I was going for there. But the... Uh, it is... It, because I was going for a wrestler's sort of theme, it um, it kind of it was a little simpler, I guess. It was a little more straightforward than a lot of the other ones, so mm-hmm. it kind of came at the cost of the the complexity. But I that is kind of what I was going for because I wanted a bit of a a bit of like a I guess shut your brain off kind of thing, um, before yeah. the final song, which really isn't. The final song is actually kind of similar to Tried and True, I would say, in stylistically, but um 
Yeah, I just wanted a little bit of a shut your brain off thing before the last song. So, mm-hmm. um, nice. The final song of the album, not including the acoustics, the final real, full, you know, original song of the of the album, is resonate. This is, in in theory, inspired by Ashes Lucario, but, um, primarily it's just a farewell song to Ash. That's kind of what I wrote it as, anyway. Um, but there are some references to Lucario here and there, and really, it's just journeys in general was all just about like doing whatever the hell you want. Um, so that's kind of what I what I went for here. So is is that a... where Ash got Lucario? Was that in Journeys? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. I guess that makes sense. Like this is the this is the wrap up series. Let's give him the some of the more iconic Pokemon and fucking bring back a lot of cameos and fucking make shit happen. Like, yep. Uh, it really does seem like, again, <sighs> it's one of those things. I might watch journeys. I might watch more Pokemon at some point, even though Ash is officially gone. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things like out of nowhere, like, Oh yeah, let's give him a Lucario <laughs> may as well. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's the same reason he got, like, Dragonite and Gengar. So, fair enough. I think Gengar um, is one of, like, I think it's Japan's favorite Pokemon. Something Gengar. like that. Yeah. yeah, some of that. Alright. Well, there you go. I'm keen. Yep. Yeah. So, this is, just keep in mind that when we, uh, for all of y'all out there, that, while this is, it is in theory, like, and, and stylistically the music, I base it on what I would, what I would think a loose Lucario song would be, but the lyrics mostly are just like sort of a, a farewell to Ash. So there you go. Keep that in mind when we go on to this one. So, oh uh, shit. There we go. Okay. I got the right song now. Okay. Nice. Um, all right. Playing the last track in three, two, one go. Ironically, I was thinking to myself the other day, this could have been the last track on uh, on my Go EP, and I don't think anybody would have blinked. <laughs> Gonna bring a tear to my eye, bro. Just wait. You ain't, you ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> the destination's still unclear, but we don't have to stay right here. So we'll explore in search of new frontiers. I know we still got room to grow. The future's never set in stone, but we don't have to Oh, that little... I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting any Lucario vibes from this. I'm getting Ash vibes, bro. Yeah, that was kind 100%. of the goal. Joy. 
That's good. Oh, this is it. Oh man, it's this is it right here. Oh. You're gonna make so many Pokemon. Fans I know, today. dude. Right. I'm ready for the comments. Bro. <laughs> Bro. I'm a menace. You are. I'm a menace. Like the- okay. Literally, the only Lucario-esque thing I got from that is Aura resonates in me, or whatever yeah. that line was. Mm -hmm. But, like, bro, you know that feeling you get sometimes when you hear something that, like, is such a kick in the gut and, like, your heart sinks a little bit and you're like, yeah. damn, that hits different. When, you first, when that bit, the journey never ends, like... Fuck, bro, you just kicked me there. <laughs> like, I literally, like, just at the ending there, before it started to slow down, before it went to the end properly, like, I was like, the journey never ends. Like, mm -hmm. oh, dude. Yeah. You had, to, you had to go and do that. My God. Yeah. The, the kicker for me is the, like, the sort of the emotional climax of the song where it says uh when one adventure ends then another begins mm -hmm. oh fuck that that one that that one almost made me cry and i wrote it bro <laughs> um, yeah oh look uh, i'm gonna do like a, mm -hmm. a fucking counter uh for how many comments you get on that song drop on youtube of like dude this made me so sad yeah we miss you, Ash. And stuff like that. Yeah. And Ash also, is the I'm real ready... protagonist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, I'm ready for the I didn't get Lucario vibes, I got Ash vibes, sort of those comments as well. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, that's, like... that's what I was going for. I mean, I really didn't have much to work with on Lucario, to be fair. Because um, that Lucario just sort of acted as a scapegoat for me to write that. Um, the pretty much the well, only thing go ahead i almost feel like you should have done like yeah like a song for lucario and then like a secret 10th track that was all about ash yeah <laughs> maybe maybe oh, i should have done that no. um but yeah the really the only thing is the very first two lines uh this is some lucario lore um the very first two lines say before the light had reached my eyes i heard a call from deep inside that was because Ash actually, uh, they saw, Ash and Go saw Lucario, or Riolu, before it hatched as an egg, and they saw it in a Pokemon Center, and uh, Ash, like, felt something, like, uh, the, we assume it was his aura powers, because we know he has them, um, but the he felt like his aura powers resonate immediately, like, after seeing the egg, and uh, the the egg, like, responded as well, so... They, um, so even before Riolu was born, it was like connecting to Ash. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. So this sort of like, that's why it was sort of like, a, it kind of works as a scapegoat to, to, to like get this whole, like we're, we're all connected to Ash. We're the, the best pals in the whole world and we love adventure. We're all friends with Ash guys. We're all friends with Ash. Yeah. So that, that is, um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, making people cry because I really think that that one's gonna. I mean, I I never cry, and I almost cried at that song, and I wrote it. <laughs> so Bro, like, I don't think any of your songs, like maybe apart from the the part and breathe where you say, "and I'll set my heart ablaze," just because mm -hmm. I know where that's what where that's coming from. Like, I don't think yep. uh, only that. And that lyric, like, the journey never ends, like, has made, like, one of your songs has made my heart sink like that. 
Like, yeah. not, not, you know what I mean by saying that? Like, it just hits fucking, like, it hits my Yeah, heart I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, not sink, that sounds wrong. Like, it's that feeling of like, oh, I know what this means, and that has actually made me feel something for real. Like, yep. That that's the second time you've done that to me with your discography that I can remember. So, yep. um, good job. Fuck. Thank you. But um, yeah, but no, yeah. That that was that was sick. That was a good song. Like not not even just as like a climactic song. It was like a very beautiful emotional yep. song, and I really did like that. Um, that is what I was going for. So I, uh, I think I have the definitive list of favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, I fucking pull up the tier list. <laughs> no, don't. Um, <laughs> uh, bottom to top, I'll go bottom to top. Okay. Uh, over the edge, battle bond. Uh, hold me down. Uh, undeniable, tried and true, resonate, ignite the fire, stand my ground, and leaf in the wind. Nice. I think that's where I'm vibing with at the minute. Cause yeah, leaf in the wind, stand my ground, ignite the fire, and like tried and true and undeniable. Those are all songs that I would actively seek. Resonate, I would actively seek if I wanted to feel a little bit sad. Um, there you go. <laughs> you know, everyone has those moods. Um, I didn't really click as much with uh, fucking Hold Me Down, Over the Edge, and Battle Bond as I wish I did. Like, mm-hmm. I, I completely wholeheartedly understand why they're there, what purpose they're serving, what stories you had to tell, especially, yep. especially with the context. Thank you. Um, with the context. Yes. And because I, I know you were doing it as. I, I know one thing if I know about you, you, uh, as you've explained as well, you weren't just doing it for the aspect of the Pokemon that, the, of like, not entirely just the Pokemon, but also in your own little way, you have your own story to tell with the song. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the Pokemon and your own little story. And yep. I understood every song. I understood where they were all coming from. Yeah, just personal preference. Those three didn't yep. connect with me as much. But overall, bang a fucking album. Like, dude, like, forgetting, completely forgetting generations ever existed. Fucking bang a original album, my guy. That was Thank fucking you. awesome. That was awesome, dude. I'm I'm glad you like it, because I'm, I'm hoping it'll... I'm hoping everyone else will like it, too, because it's, uh... I mean... Again, we want to talk about knowing each other. I know you've got some weird ass music taste, so I'm hoping uh-huh. that the general fandom, fa- general, uh, you know, of of people who listen to my music, I'm hoping they'll just overall have a very warm reception to it. And I'm very proud of what I've done, because uh, I mean, and I think I, mean, I didn't mention this, but I think like resonate, like that that song feels to me like the culmination of like the style like the silver storm style if you will that i worked on building for so long um Mm -hmm. and because it's just it's got everything that i love in in music it's like it's got that a really comfortable and beautiful piano riff it's got like these fun rhythm guitars throughout um fun and like bouncy that keep the track feeling fresh and 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 fun uh it's got this awesome little lead riff at the beginning it's um like a a little lead melody and it's got like some really a really catchy chorus it's everything that i worked to to develop in my in writing my own music so Mm -hmm. i think i think people will i think that one is going to connect for the most part like that one's going to be the standout of especially the new songs um but again i think my personal favorite is still leaf in the wind just because i think that one is is just it, it just turned out so well like I, I don't know how to explain it but i i'm really proud of that one um but it's that one and resonate for me are my two favorites so uh yeah it, i mean like, other, i mean they're all i mean i'm attached to all of them right they're my songs but obviously. it's like <laughs> it, it's just the even my own personal preference like i would probably agree with you my favorite is probably leaf in the wind but again mm-hmm. it's like you mentioned this is they're all like these are all songs that 
you won't have trouble identifying, right? Like a lot of albums, you'll be like, oh my God, which song in the album is this? I know it's this album, but what song is it? I can't remember. Um, or I can't distinguish them. These are all very easily distinguishable from each other. So that's like the main thing that I was really going for. I didn't want them all to be samey. I wanted them to have their own distinct feel and style to them. So that's what I was going for there. And I think it worked out and I think people are going, I hope, well, you know, I think people will, but I also just generally hope that they have a warm reception to it. So it was a, it was a fun album to make. And obviously like I've had this planned for many, many years, like, well, not that many, but like since tried and true, essentially, like I was, I started Uh, brainstorming tried and true almost three years ago. Yeah, no, I remember when you dropped Tried and True, and I think we might have talked about it on the podcast. You literally just just shattered the idea of, like, I want to make an album based on different Pokemon that Ash has had, like his yep. pieces. I remember you spouting that idea a long time ago, and then yep. I almost feel like there was just a period of time where I heard nothing about it, and then all of a sudden, like, yo, I've got some singles ready. Like, oh shit, it's coming. Yeah. Here it is. Let's fucking go. And yeah. You're right. I feel like, like at, at least for me, just com- completely ignoring you as a person. If I never knew you and it was only yeah. just a fan of your music, just from my point of view, yeah, tried and true, one of those songs, like, it's just, yeah, that's the sort of style I expect when I hear Silver Storm. But yeah. you're right. Resonate is the perfect culmination and demonstration of how well you've gotten over the years. The perfect fucking, like, yeah, that's that's the fucking benchmark. That is yeah. so good. Yeah. Like, re- that's what I was going for. Heat different, bro. And I think, like, and even for you as someone who, like, hasn't seen Pokemon in God knows how long, for people who are, like, on top of it, that is going to fucking destroy them. So, mm-hmm. and all that while still being, I think, a really fun song just overall, just having that really upbeat and, like, uplifting feel to it, I accomplished what I wanted to. So, <laughs> I'm sorry in advance for all the tears, though. You can, I'll give you, like, I'll send a, for any of you who bought CDs, I'll send you, like, a cup in the mail for them. You Bro, just send, all. like, send a napkin with the I'm CDs. collecting your tears for scientific purposes. You need you need to like send a, send just a folded over napkin and just yeah. sign it with for the tears. Yeah, send that with I might. I almost want to do that. I bet I expect that with mine. All right, I ordered the fucking. CD. I'll, I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll put a napkin and it'd be like for track number nine. <laughs> yeah, please, please, that'd be good. That'd be fun. I kind of want to do that. Oh fuck. Um. Well, but yeah. Th- there you go. There's an album that... review of something I wrote. Whoop de doo. <laughs> Incredible. Um, Incredible. Uh, Dude, just gen- a heads gen- up, the uh, acoustic songs, like, they're pretty much just the same. I, I like, uh, Undeniable Acoustic is is pretty different. Like, it's significantly different, and I like what I did with it. Um, it's just like, you know, it's just an acoustic, right? It's the same song. I did add some lyrics to the very end, but it's just like four lines of lyrics that are very basic. And it's like, it ends with uh, something along the lines of, um, it actually ends with the album title. It's where it's like, I'll always turn to you or something like that. That's the very last line of Undeniable Acoustic. Uh, I wrote some extra lines for it. So, um, But Resonate is the de facto end of the album. Uh, the other, the acoustic tracks are just there for people who like the softer versions. Um, maybe less inclined towards rock music that kind of thing um so there you go uh that's that's all the that's all all the new songs in the album so uh there you go. Fo- following that hope up. you all enjoyed it i'm very yes, proud definitely of it. yeah I, I am very proud of you dude like this Thank has you. been a long time because you like we were even we were even discussing like just before we hit record like back compared to like when I started talking about Gus with the amazing online artists and my what songs were my favorites back then were like damn that's a cringe list like yeah. that's like that's <laughs> all those songs were like 
that that was all like alpha fucking silver storm where yeah very like version 0.1 <laughs> yeah like yeah this is 1.0 here come. this is 1.0 here exactly uh, so like, it's see, seeing how far you've come over the past few years is like and actually being able to witness it and appreciate that firsthand and hearing all everything you been wanting to do it's just been it's night it's night and day compared to like that alone ep and shit oh man i don't want to even think about it (laughs) but who who is that we don't even know who that is who is that that's like an eight some 18 year old doofus (laughs) as opposed to a 23 year old doofus yeah Uh, now now, now you're 23 year old dingus yeah (laughs) i evolved uh, (laughs) from doofus to dingus like Pokemon, Uh, i evolved exactly um Two things. Uh, a, genuinely, like, because I, I would like to believe that fans of yours have come over to witness this who are unfamiliar with Firestorm, so I think a lot of people would be unfamiliar I'll definitely with... be fucking pushing this once it comes out so people can hear all the lore. Yes, definitely. Um, I feel like people will be listening to this who haven't heard a lot of the previous conversations we've had about this album and different songs we've been making and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um genuinely what do you feel like will happen from here in regards to your music what do you expect to do and do you think yeah you you mentioned it before but do you think this is it for pokemon music or i would say uh, my my instinct is to say i want to cap it off here right because resonate is perfect like i love it the way it is it's a perfect capstone to all the pokemon stuff i've ever done it, 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 in fact, it. I literally wrote them, I wrote these songs in the order of the album. So, like, that Resonate was the last song I wrote. Even I did, I even did Undeniable Acoustic before Resonate. So, the, like, that I feel like I don't need to do any more Pokemon. Even if there were something that I wanted to do, like, I don't think... At least as Silver Storm, I don't think I need to do any more Pokemon. I think that's enough. Mm-hmm. Now, there may come a time when I decide against that. And, like, I'm not saying I will never... I'm not, like, pulling a Nate Wants to Battle here. I'm not saying I will never do <laughs> Pokemon music ever again, right? Uh, I don't want to rule it out entirely. But I will say that I, I'm i leaning towards Silver Storm will not have any more Pokemon music because I imagine... If there is more Pokemon music I want to tackle, Imperfect Storm will do it. So yes, that so that will probably be the case. I feel like that is the case because I I do recall you guys have not only been like you've done a few covers here and there, but also the original music for Zano, mm-hmm. um, like inspired by. You know, his remake, but also, yeah, technically, Pokemon, in that sense. So, that makes sense 100%. Yep. So, um, yeah. But yeah, overall, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna be slowing down anytime soon, really. I mean, I still have a bunch of, a bunch more songs I want to cover, and I still have, I mean, I have a huge fucking list of, uh, anime characters to write about. I mean, fucking list them off, right? Like, I got, um, I just added fucking Ichigo Kurosaki to the list because I'm reading Bleach. Luffy, Asta, fucking uh, uh, Shinra from Fire Force, fucking uh, Yuji from Jujutsu Kaisen. I got a bunch more characters I want to write original songs about. Um, this I'll just put this on the podcast because why not? Fuck it. Um, do you remember that demo I sent you forever ago that you said you really liked? Do you remember that? Of an original the, song? The, I remember you said multiple demos which one are you talking about specifically? uh it would uh, i think i called it end at the time uh it was another sad one it was no, it no. was a, it was a sad one yeah but it like it kind of had a sad vibe to it but it was also like uh kind of like edgy rock do you remember that yeah i think i do okay yeah. that's gonna eventually because jujutsu kaisen season two is coming out very soon uh i'm actually turning that into the yuji song so i figured since i have it uh i might as well use it so there's more to come but i think pokemon stuff at least as far as silver storm is concerned is capped off because god i have so much 
Uh, <laughs> I think like at nearly half my discography is Pokemon stuff. And that's not even including the <laughs> Mystery Dungeon album. Like even half, uh, nearly half of the songs that I've done where I sang on them are Pokemon stuff. So uh, I'm very, I'm very happy uh about the mystery dungeon uh shout out because my friend peach got did the art for that very, yes very epic. that's very great epic. art i love that mm-hmm. art actually um but yeah i mean i she turned that sketch into f- fucking something actually passable i actually drew <laughs> that that sketch like the mystery dungeon album art i drew that as a sketch and i was like can you use this and she was like yeah probably <laughs> very epic. uh but yeah, yeah, it's do you, um. Do you think because yeah, you've got a lot of songs you want to do about original like, originals for characters? Yeah. Do you think you would ever compile those along with like yes, you're the reason? Yes, absolutely. And all that? So my list actually is in the form of an album. So ah. yeah, so it's it's uh what well here it is sixteen. Should, should we expect uh? sort of big release like what would happen with I don't, Tried and True? I don't Turned, oh, know. Yeah, Tried and True. Turned to Ash. Turned to Ash, you mean. Um, yes. No, I don't think it'll be a big release. I don't know if I'll do it on CD, but maybe. Um, but overall, it's just like, it, it's, it would be a very big compilation. Like, I think there are 16 original songs here. Uh, You're the Reason, Why I Fight, Second Nature, Breathe are all on that list. Um... Bro, I've done the art for all those. I'm so happy. It, no, exactly. <laughs> I, actually, that's the thing. Like, I think this is going to be more of a compilation because I'm actually planning yeah. to keep all of those singles live. Like, usually when I take when I put an album that has the songs, I just take the singles down because they're just taking up space. So, mm-hmm. but this one, I feel like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave them all here. Fuck, I'll drop the whole list. Uh, oh, boys. Uh, well, here's some here's some characters. Oh, I got them right here. Um. Asta, Black Clover, Shinra from Fire Force, Yuji, Jujutsu Kaisen, Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy from One Piece. All three of the boys. Um, Epic. Gray and Jalal from Fairy Tail. Um, Yuno as well from Black Clover. Bakugo and Todoroki from My Hero. Uh, and uh, Ichigo from Bleach. That's the whole list of stuff I have not done yet. Plus, um, plus some acoustic tracks. So, there you go. Very epic, dude. Very epic. That's. Yeah, no, I mean, com- that plans could change, but I mean, I'm pretty comfortable with that list at this point. So yeah, a compilation makes sense. I think. Like, I- I'm not gonna tell you how to do your job, but I think gauge how this release does. Yeah. And from that, see if you want to go with a big release for the compilation with the CD yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Just see how big a hype it gets. I think this is a good indicator, even though this is your first one. Then yeah. there are two big vibes here, because like we know Pokemon crowd's gotta be around for this one. But I feel like you're the reason and why I fight have definitely got their own little like communities. I'm not gonna say communities around the songs, but you've attracted different uh, Yeah, the audience for those songs. are different from the Pokemon ones. I agree. Um yeah. so We'll see. It, it just depends, like, because I think the... At this point, I've done so much general anime stuff that I think my audience is more attuned to that at this point. Uh, which is fine, because that's the future of this channel, really. Um, or yeah, that's epic. Silver Storm. So that's good. That's what I wanted. But uh, it's... Yeah, it just, it just depends. Uh, I don't know if I'll do a CD, but just releasing a CD in general is something that I've always wanted to do and just have as, like, a... a a fun thing that I've done. I won't like necessarily, I wasn't necessarily looking to like sell a million of them. It was just like, here's something fun. I want to do. You can have this album on CD. And this one's really, this one feels more like a full album to me, like an actual, like an album with purpose, at least, you know, like this tells, they feel like this album tells a story sort of, um, or at least in each of the songs, at least tell a story. So I, and then plus, I mean, I got, I commissioned Lucas for this album art, and it's fucking incredible. So it would be a shame not to have it on CD, really. Exactly. Um, so, exactly. I mean, this I I I'll tell you what, dude. I uh, saw someone liked. So I I got the CDs in yesterday. I got the Turn to Ash CDs in yesterday in the mail, and I posted a tweet about it. And someone who liked that tweet has the album art as their profile picture. 
Damn. And I and I think someone I think someone just asked me for like the full can can we see the full picture in HD? I was like, I don't I I guess um, I mean, like they like they that, like that, that is. Uh, I mean, the album art is fucking incredible. Yeah. So I mean, that, that, that's just telling of the Pokemon fans loving and appreciating the art to yeah. the point where they want to see the full thing. Like, I, I get that as well, but I, I understand that kind of conflict. Like, yeah, I get that. Like the pur- Yeah. I, I get their reasoning, but also the yes. purpose of this is for my music. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, so I get I, I get it, but and I, I totally understand. Like they're very Pokemon fans are very uh, simple minded, and they like when they see something they like, they just latch onto it. So, and yeah, that's the re- whole reason I think like the Turn to Ash original, like, the album announcement itself, left its target audience because it's just so fucking cool. Like mm. it is, it, it's what like it's just a big compilation of all of Ash's best Pokemon. Uh, so... Except a few people going, where's Heracross? Yeah, or like, where's, uh, where's Dragonite or some shit like that. Um, or someone didn't like Lucario being there, which is weird. But I'm not sure who they would have put in his place. I mean, you mentioned it yourself, that it was kind of just like, it was... Well, there was not really an ace in Journeys, really. Except for Pikachu. Like, my other choices were Dragonite, Gengar, Dracovish, and Surfetched. So I decided to go with Lucario. <laughs> no, that, that's valid. That's um, very valid. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. It's it's just it's just a fucking incredible art. Lucas really outdid himself. Uh, and actually, Turn to Ash, the art, was originally a sketch I did as well. But, God, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> it was fucking horrendous. Uh, and I was like... I, I gave Lucas the sketch, and I was like, "This is okay. kind of how I want it can, to look." Can you can you provide me the sketch? I I know I've said this a hundred fucking times in the past. Provide me the sketch. I will include it in the video. I'm gonna write it right down. Okay, I'm. I need to find it. Okay, but it's like it should have been. Sh- it should not have been thirty days. Wait, maybe it has been thirty days. Damn it, it's been thirty days. Okay, I gotta find it. Okay, like it's around the two-hour mark of our video. I will include the art. I'll if you also have the mystery dungeon art. I think you send that to me. I'll include that as well. Um, yeah, I am going to. I really need to find this thing. Make fucking effort with this one, because I said a hundred times. I even said it during the podcast we did about my trip to Japan. I said I was going to include photos and shit, and I didn't because I'm a fucking lazy cunt. So I well, rem- I'm gonna wait, remember this time around. I found it. <laughs> Let's there go. It I found it. Um, so he didn't follow the uh, exact, um, like the exact layout that I originally drew. But here, I'll actually, I'll just take a picture of it right now and send it in the Discord. Um, nice. Look, okay. I'm turn the light on because I think you might have sent it to me ages ago. Actually, let me have a look. But yeah, that, I don't that was know. Pretty sick. This is goddamn awful. All right, hold on. <laughs> I'll sh- I'll send it right now. Where is that shit? Uh. <laughs> I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Here you go. Here you go. It's right. No, it's right there. I sent it in the chat right now. Oh no. Well, it's sending. It's working on it. Point is, the sketch is goddamn awful, but the art was cool. Um. One hundred percent. So I'm really because Lucas is actually knows how to draw. So, um, but yeah, thank. Uh, just generally, um, I hope y'all like the album. It's it should be like we said, it's out. It's not out at, at the time we're recording this, but when this comes out, it will have been released. So I hope y'all like it. And uh, for all the for all the Pokemon fans in my audience, uh, this will probably be the last Pokemon stuff that I do. As there it is. As Silverstorm, so uh, hey, you know what could be worse. Could be worse, honestly. Yeah, well, you know what? I I referenced uh, like portraits of them as I uh, as I was doing it. So, um, yeah, it's. I mean, just fucking look at <laughs> Crocodile's stupid fucking <laughs> head. Um, yeah, originally I wanted it to be more like take up the full, like the the vertical length too. But Lucas went for a more side, um, like a more horizontal wide 
approach, which is fine, because I think it turned out fucking awesome. But, um, yeah, originally it was like I wanted Greninja, the two tall boys, Greninja and Sceptile, on either side. Incineroar and Crocodile sort of in between, like, they would be behind Infernape and Lycanroc, and then Charizard would be in the very back. That's sort of how I was imagining it. But the actual album art is just so fucking cool, I couldn't bring myself to be like, hey, can you fix this? Because it didn't really need to be fixed. <laughs> um, Not valid. Yeah, so it was, uh, it just turned out fucking great. So, um, yeah. I, like I said, hope y'all like it, and, uh, if there is more Pokemon, like I said, I'm not putting the kibosh on it forever, but I imagine just in due course, like just because of the times be changing, uh, that I, this is the last Pokemon stuff I'll ever do. But um, at least as Silver Storm, Imperfect Storm may do some stuff in the future. Uh, but you'll have to hang in there and see. Otherwise, um, most of the Pokemon stuff that I've ever wanted to do is already done. So... Yeah, there you, go. you said before, I'm not going to pull a Nate wants to battle and never say never. But dude, yep. you've done way more Pokemon songs than Nate has ever done now. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's that's quite telling. Yeah, true. I put Nate's FNAF discography to shame with my Pokemon discography. <laughs> Jesus. Check um, out all the albums, guys. Just fucking yep. go check them all out. If You, you know what you like. You know Pokemon yep. stuff. It's all there. He's done it all. Think of a Pokemon song. Damn. He's done it. Yep. Man. Cup line line. Unless not, it's a unless out. it's a Japanese opening, in which case you have about a 50 50 shot. 50 <laughs> 50. Uh, Check out, like, I don't know, Imperfect Storm. Mecca. Yep. Has he done Pokemon? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I don't remember Check. off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. And thank you, mm-hmm. Gus, for sharing this all with us. It is Yay. Been awesome. It has been a job well done. And Thank you. Nine to eleven solid tracks of pure bangers. I said nothing but 11. straight. I probably shouldn't have said that. Listen, it's fine. It's nine tracks total. I mean, it's really nine. Tra- it's eleven total, but it's nine really. So yeah. whatever. Um, it has dead. been in the works for a long time, so I'm glad to see it all finished up. Makes me a proud dad, if you will. Uh. So, I mean, I don't and know. Do I call it, do I, am I the parent of my own songs? I don't fucking know. Yeah, uh, and now, now, now you will send physical forms of your children to everyone around yes, the world. Yes, I made clones of them. You're welcome. You can't, you can't <laughs> receive a clone with the napkin uh, for my tears. Yep. I will include it. Now I have to. Uh, <laughs> I'll just be like, I'll just put a note on everyone. You'll need this. Trust me. <laughs> I swear it's not weird um, <laughs> but yeah uh... <laughs> right. well thank you guys so much for joining us yep. please hit the like button hit subscribe and make sure to follow us both on twitter and facebook our firestorm account is at firestorm pod Gus is silverstorm 100 and I am trend jm 27 this mm-hmm. is for as long as Twitter lives. And yep. don't who knows how long to... that'll be. Yeah, exactly. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, our other channels, our own channels, and of course, please subscribe to Firestorm. We have content coming. We will probably yes. in the midst of dropping Tears of the Kingdom if we haven't already yes. dropped a bunch of it. Yes. Um, we you're you're probably going to see like Tears of the Kingdom videos like in the next few days. So subscribe now. Or you could probably are you if you haven't watched them, there's probably fuck ton out already. So cause right as we're recording this, it is the day before Zelda drops. And god damn it, I'm excited. So uh, strap in, because we're gonna be playing Tears of the Kingdom on this channel and we're gonna have a fucking uh, a great time. Because we love Zelda on this channel. So we do um yeah. Get in, and uh, if you haven't seen Tears of the Tears of the Kingdom videos already, go watch them. I'm sure they're bangers. Exactly. Um, but and, and was well, one final reminder: please stream the album if you haven't already. Um, oh, one hundred percent. Please stream the album if you don't. If you didn't buy a CD, I totally get it. Like a bunch of people have asked me, is there if it's gonna be on Spotify? Of course it fucking is. It's gonna be on Spotify. It's gonna be everywhere you can find your music. So if you don't buy a CD, it's cool. You can stream the album wherever you like. So. Uh, make missed, sure to stream the missed, album. 
if the CDs are available, make sure you fucking yes, get one. Yes, there might, even if, if as this drops, there might still be a couple left. Um, so you might be able to buy a CD. We'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, if, if there are any. But even still, you can yeah. buy the album on Bandcamp, whatever. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, stream. make sure to stream the album, add it, add it to your playlists. Um, yeah, usually, it'll, it'll be on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. The whole nine yards. Uh, yep. Google, Google Play, uh, Amazon Music. Uh, fucking Deezer. Oh, well. Fucking Deezer. Who the fuck is? I don't know who's that. Uh, me. Like, either. What, where? Who? Where, what else is there? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Um, me either. Fuck. I'll pull up my whole list. Yeah, Hold do on. it. Pull up the whole list. Read out the whole list. Here I it is. Turn to Ash it. was submitted to uh, Amazon. The fuck does that say? Jeff Bezos. On Gami, uh, Apple. What the fuck is On Gami? I don't know. Uh, Media Net, uh, Boom Play, Deezer. Mm. Instagram and Facebook. Fuck Adapter, yeah. Adapter. Uh, oh, you know, okay, wait, wait, wait. You know what? Well, you know why Instagram and Facebook is so people can use them in their, like, their short videos? Yeah, and they're in their TikToks. Tay, we submitted to TikTok as well. Use it in your TikToks. Oh, yeah, yeah the boys. TikTok. Yeah, you can use it in your TikToks. Uh, YouTube Music, iHeartRadio, yeah. uh, oh, Claro, yeah. Claro Musica, whatever the fuck that is. The fuck is that? Uh, uh, Spanish? Uh, uh, Jukes. Jukes, whatever the fuck that is. Fuck uh, Jukes. KK Bops. I thought they thought just uh, made games. KK Bops. KK these nuts. <laughs> Quack Media. Quack. Uh, NetEase. Quobuzz. Uh, Pandora. Savin. Uh, yeah. Spotify. Uh, Tencent. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Tidal. TikTok. A, uh, Twitch. Yep. And Yandex Tidal. Music. That's all it's of them. Tidal. Yandex, Tuttle, uh, fuck YouTube music, yep, 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 all that shit. Whatever all one that you shit. use, if you use Tidal for some fucking reason, you, yeah, if you use it. Jukes, it's I even on Jukes, Jukes. Made games. I thought they made games. Hell <laughs> I if I know. Ju- oh well. Anyway, TikTok. Listen to it exclusively. Yeah, TikTok. use Thank you. yeah, use it in your TikToks. Make, Make uh, sure AMV. Oh, man, dude, I'll tell you what, make an AMV out of my songs. I saw this one, uh, someone made an AMV out of Second Nature. That shit is a I banger. It. Yeah, it's, a, it. It it's fucking good. incredible. Um, so, I don't know, make AMVs out of my songs. That shit is awesome. I love that. Uh, mm. So, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Buy a CD Listen. player. <laughs> dude, I actually saw my CD player. <laughs> <laughs> I saw literally Who needs that shit. I I, I, don't, I don't know why we're still talking, but we are. Literally, the only CDs I have are Nate Wants to Battle and Skillet CDs. I got rid of the rest, so um, nice. I even just got uh, Dominion Day of Destiny finally as a CD. Um, oh, nice! So now you're gonna be the exception, you cock. Wow! So, I'm so honored. Holy shit! Uh, you anyway, get to be, you get to be in the uh, pile of displayed CDs that will probably not get played. I have a <laughs> CD player in my new car. You know what? I'll pop it on. Yeah. yeah Put that boys. bitch in. Um. All right. Yeah, that's now we're done for real. Okay. Probably. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye. What are we doing next time? Your mom. No fucking way.